morning and welcome to Breakthrough Walls. I'm Ken Walls and I'm your host and I have a very special, hang on, let me fix my focus here. It's acting crazy. Um, so I have a very special guest on today, but before we start with that, I want to say that this show is being sponsored by the Rockstar Automotive Conference. Matt Koenig, I appreciate you. Anybody in the car business, make sure you get to the Rockstar Auto Conference and, and just Google it and, and get your tickets. It's, it's in uh, Vegas in May, so check it out. Anyway, without any more about that, I want to welcome my really, really, really special guest, Dr. Janice Doan to the show. Janice, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ken. So glad to be here, and it's such an honor. It's uh, it's an honor to have you on. Like you're a um, you're like a top notch dentist out in San Diego, and I know you're you probably have patients waiting down the hall, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, today is President Weekend, so or President Day, so we are not close. Are we closing today? Oh, I got you. I got you. Well, then you picked the perfect day to be on the show. <laughs> that's, yeah, exactly. That's why you picked it, huh? I did. Awesome. Awesome. So so why don't you, um, and, you know, I, out of respect, I always like to refer to doctors as doctor until they tell me otherwise. So, um, but, so why don't you talk a little bit about um, like where you were born and raised and, and how life began for you. Sure. Um, I was, I hear a little echo, so let me just make sure. Is it okay. still, th still there? No, no, that's good. Okay, good. All right. So, um, I was born and raised in Vietnam, in Saigon to be exact. And I was there until about 11 years old. Um, I found family and I got started to the United States and we started off in Oakland near San Francisco and from there we stayed for a few months and then um, the expenses there was higher so we decided to move down to Los Angeles and that's where my parents um, were able to find a um, job because at that time there was not a lot of job for someone older um, so we have to move down to Los Angeles and um, she was able to find a um, job at the um, like a sewing factory. Wow. And, and that's where my dad and my mom were able to find some work there while we while they supported us. And that's where we lived up until I went to college and I went to UC Irvine for undergrad and I went to USC dental school. And then from there, I moved to San Diego. Wow. Okay. So you just fast forwarded through a lot of years. Yeah. <laughs> so, but let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about, um, like, you grew up in Vietnam until you were 11 years old. So mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Um, it was very suppressive. Um, there was not, it's not a good environment to be in. Um, there was a lot of, um, communism, um, you know, life there. It just kind of like we have to work for what we have and it's constant struggle. Mm -hmm. Um, basically I was fortunate to be able to raise by my grandparents because my dad was helping in the Vietnam War um, with the U.S., so wow. we tried to escape, and we didn't make it a few times by boat at um, during the war ended. Um, and then after that, um, they didn't let my dad stay with us in the city. They dispersed all the men to different area of you know outside of the um, the main city. So I wasn't able to live with my parents growing up. Oh wow. That must yeah. have been um, that must have been difficult. It was um, because you know you want to stay with your parents yeah. and you want to stay with your siblings, but I don't get to see them maybe like two three times a year. They get to come in to visit, or I would go out there during my summer break and visit them. Oh my goodness! 
Wow. Yeah. And how far, like, how far apart were you? Like, what was the the distance? The distance. Um, it was probably about back then. There was no train. You know, you have to go by the bus, and so it takes a long time to travel, like almost a day. Wow. Yeah. Just to see your parents. Uh huh. My goodness. So, um, did that did that set a tone for you for anything moving forward in life? I mean, so you were eleven eleven years old. You escaped Vietnam. Is that mm -hmm. right? Is that the right word to use? Escaped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we were sponsored over um, by the Catholic Church, um, so we were grateful for that. Oh, that's great. So, and yeah. and it was you and your mom and dad and your siblings? Yes. And what about your grandparents? Um, they didn't want it to move with us, so they stayed there. I mean, they were older. They were back in their 60s, so um, they didn't want to make the changes. I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. So um, you came over, and you said at first you went to – uh-oh, I, th I think I lost her. I lost her. Hang on just a second. Hang on just a second here. I think um, her internet connection might be bad right now. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's okay. Um, all right. So um, you you said that you, you came to the U.S., could you move just a little bit over to a little bit more up the other way, the other way, just a little, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Now you're centered. Um, <laughs> so, so you came to the U S and you started in, in up near Oakland, you said. Yes. Okay. Um, and when you came to the U S how was, um, I mean, there's a language barrier, right? Yes, absolutely. I did not know any English at all. Oh my god! <laughs> I did not. Yes, and I did not know like where we were. I felt like I was a foreigner dropping in another planet. Um, I never seen any Caucasian, African American, different ethnicity. I always so used to seeing my own people. Um, wow. So I was like, "What is this place? Like, uh, what is car? Like, there's so many cars, and we don't have cars in my country." Wow. So just traveling and like the food, the atmosphere—it was freezing in San Francisco area. So it was so many different challenges. <laughs> Do, does it get? But does it get cold in Vietnam? No, it's a tropical country, okay. so it's like humid. It's hot. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that would be a huge <laughs> culture shock. Every, every kind of shock. Everything. Yes. I remember, you know, from the airport, um, I didn't like the big space on the airplane. So I was like, why is this so big? So my sister and I, we would like go underneath the seat and sit instead just oh, because wow. I was more comfortable sitting underneath than on the actual chair. Um, and then getting off the airplane, seeing all these different ethnicity, you know, people, different things going on and, you know, getting into the car, I couldn't stand the smell because it was making me nauseous. Oh, um, wow. But yeah, so things like that, it was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> where am so, I? <laughs> so you like, but what does like, okay, so you grew up, what year was that when you came over here? 1991. Okay. Hey, Scott Simons is on here. <laughs> hey, Scott. Yeah, Scott's awesome. I love Scott. So, yeah. so 1991, and so you grew up at the end. Well, the Vietnam War had been over for quite a while, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm sure there were still a lot of hard feelings, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? So, yeah. so what was it, what was it like, like, you know, there's, there, so there had to be that too, right? Inside you're thinking, I'm going to America where we just were in this big war for a long time and that where everybody hates us. And did you feel that? Did you think? 
Well, I was very ignorant. I was a young child. My parents didn't really tell me anything. They actually told me we were going on a vacation. Oh wow! And so I didn't even know that I was going to America. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow! Wow! Yes. So so. So you, I yes, it was an absolute surprise for me as well. <laughs> so you get here, you don't speak English. Right. You, know, you probably didn't run into a lot of people that spoke Vietnamese. <laughs> no. <Nope>. So, <laughs> how did you communicate? I didn't. I mean, I just observed people body language and just kind of see and observe for myself what's going on. Um, how do people do things here? What's going on? And just watching like constantly like a hawk and see what people do. And I just kind of duplicate what they did wow wow that's incredible so how how did you learn english because you speak um, english very well now thank you yes um from school um i guess just talking learning from my friends and watching a lot of tv <laughs> <laughs> for really wow wow yes like the cartoon and just like having my um, Vietnamese dictionary and just kind of translate back and forth. Wow, that is so awesome. That's so awesome. And and at what age did you become fluent in English? Like how long had you been here? Um, So 91, so it's been a while now, like almost over 25 years. Yeah. Um, I didn't really feel I was fluent in English until maybe a few years ago. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, there's still a lot of words where I have to like look up the definitions and everything, but oh, wow. That's <laughs> I'm awesome. always still learning, you know, like different expression. I'm like, I didn't get that. <laughs> Can you explain? <laughs> yeah. That is funny. Oh my gosh. Well, and, and it would be the same if, if I went to Vietnam, right? Like I, I, it would take me probably way longer to learn the Vietnamese language. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So, yes. so, so here you were, um, in Oakland. How long were you in Oakland? I would say about less than six months. Okay. So, and then you ended up in Los Angeles, right? Yes. And how long did you stay in Los Angeles? Your whole life or from as an adult or a child, I mean? Mm hmm Yes. Where did you go to school down there? Um, at Bowen Park High School. Okay. So it's more like a more mixed um, Latino communities. Okay. Were there other Vietnamese yeah. kids there? Very, not a lot, like less than 0.5%, oh, wow. less than 1%. Yeah. Okay, so did you, how, uh, what was that like? I mean, I, I'm just, because I grew up in the middle of the sticks, nowhere, country, right. like, you know, I, I, I can't even imagine. Like, here you are in one of the largest cities in the world, L.A., and right. there's barely any other Vietnamese kids. What was that like for you growing, growing up or being a, in high school in, in Los Angeles? Well, it definitely made me feel different. Um, I didn't have any friends that were similar to me. I have maybe just a small handful of less than five friends that were Asian. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Vietnamese were probably maybe three or four friends. Um, yeah. And then that's about it. And yeah. then I tried to connect with other people. But, you know, at that time, we didn't have the internet. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right. You know, it's not the same as now. Um, so you physically have to go out and meet people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so, um, so you went through high school in, in Los Angeles. Um, mm -hmm. And your parents, you said, got a job working in a, um, a sewing like Factory. Factory. Yeah. Wow. And and then you you ended up going to college and dental school. What in the world made you want to go to dental school? 
<laughs> That's a great question, Ken. Uh, my sister actually um, started dental school before I did. Oh. And so when I was in college, I was looking at different um, career path and I happened to stumble into her school and helping her and watching her and what she's doing. And I was very intrigued by that. So um, she inspired me in a way to become a dentist. Wow. Really? Yeah. Go sis. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so both of you are dentists. Yes. And we work together. Do you really? That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I looked on your website. I saw, I saw her on there. Um, yes. so, so you, um, you became, so you went to dental school and you became a dentist. Uh huh. Um, and you know, I, 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 I told you I have a lot of dentist friends, a whole lot. And, um, most dentists do pretty well, I think, you know, fi financially, most dentists do okay or pretty good actually, not just okay. Um, but like. What, you know, I know you see a lot of people out in the world that it, I think that it's absolutely amazing what you've accomplished because you, here you are, you come to the United States, you don't know a word of English, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you can't communicate with anybody. <laughs> you get plopped into to, to a high school in, in one of the largest cities in the world um, in Los Angeles, and you don't know anybody, right? Right. And you, you, right. and then you, you go and blow up and become a dentist. <laughs> wow. What was the driving force for you? What was it that made you, I mean, because you have, you have, um, I mean, dental school isn't cheap number one i i know it's 300 grand just to go to dental school <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's a lot of money right so like what made you th what was the driving force why not just go get a job in a in a sewing factory <laughs> well i saw how hard my parents worked when i was younger um you know going after school, um, going home and helping them like until midnight for them to meet the deadline. You know, we cut things and we sold things for like one penny at a time. Oh. I mean, it's just a lot of work for just so little money. And I saw how much hard work that they put into and the sacrifices that they did. And I realized at that time that I needed to do something different. So then that way, you know, I didn't waste their time of trying to get us over here for nothing. You know, like I want to make their sacrifice mean something because they left their family, their friends, their country where they used to, to bring us over here. So the sacrifices that they did for us, like I want to make sure that I was able to give back to my parents. Um, so that was what driving me. And I knew that I wanted to do more than what, you know, I, I saw my parents were doing. So I wanted to help more people and I wanted to help myself. So I wanted to make something out of myself. Um, but wow. yeah, I mean, the work itself, I just learned and watching my parents like doing all this small work for very little money. And I knew that I have to do something more than that. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. I love that answer. So let me ask you this. So um, Martin and Chelsea mm -hmm. Matthews are on here, by the way. I love them. Stephen Fowl, what's up? So, so, so there's, okay, I'm, this is going to sound horrible. I, all the Americans on here right now are probably going to leave and unfriend me. But there's a lot <laughs> There's in, in, in America, um, there are a lot of people who, um, who feel like they're owed something, <laughs> right? And that's probably all over the world, right? But, but the, the, the people that, I mean, you did, you didn't, you could have been a victim, you could have been like, I can't believe they moved me here to this country where I know nobody don't speak the language and. You could have been that victim, right? But you chose a different right. path. Yes. 
what do you think keeps people stuck in a victim mentality? In, in this country, it's huge. There's a lot of victims. A lot of people that, that I mean, bad stuff happens to everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Unplanned for things occur and, and people fall into that victim mentality. So what, what do you think keeps people stuck there? I think that people get so used to doing the minimum and wanting to get bigger results. Um, and they don't want to do the work. Um, if you don't do the work, you're not going to get the result you want. So I think they get stuck there because not that they're lazy, but they just don't know how to take more action. They don't want to take more action. So it has to start with them not wanting to change in order to have more things in life that they would like to have more of. Wow. That's a great answer. It's a great answer. Yeah. So, so along your journey, have, have you, have you met people or helped people change from having that mentality? Yeah, absolutely. I met a lot of people, um, through, you know, my practice, my patients, getting connected with my patients on a daily basis. Yeah. I'm not just helping them with their oral health or their dental needs, but I'm helping them change their life as well. Um, you know, just a little bit of dental work. I mean, I relate to my patients so much on so many different levels because when I was younger, I had really bad tea. Like my mouth was a mess coming from Vietnam over here. Yeah. I have cavities. I have full gum disease I have like crooked tea I have like yellow stain and everything and yeah. I didn't have friends because of that yeah. um, so people were just kind of like judging me because of the way I was looking and it wasn't until I did my braces and then did some work on myself that's when people started to you know notice me because I change because once I start changing then I get to be more open with um, other people around me. Right. So, you know, like my patient the same way when they first come to see me, they so into themselves, but just doing a little bit of dentistry helped their confidence and slowly they change their mentality and they change the mindset and they able to do more things because now they feel like they feeling good about themselves. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, and so that all comes down to what you said earlier. Like you can't fix your teeth if you don't take action. Right. It's not right. you can't you can't fix anything in life until you take action. And and, you know, I, I like I see in the background, I'm going to put it on full screen you. But in the background, Grant's staring at me. I see him on the yeah. side of a binder over there. I see success yeah. is your duty, obligation, responsibility, everything Grant back there. And I love yeah. that because Grant Cardone has helped me. He's helped you. He's helped so many people. And, and, and he talks about that a lot. Like, what's the right level of action to take? Right? It's massive. 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 Right. It's massive action. So, like... With when when you come across people that that you know they need to change, not not necessarily their dental health either, just a person you might run into at the growth conference or something. Like, what do you say to that person to get them to get them to start taking action? What how do you motivate people? You personally? Well, a lot of um, when I was at the conference, I met so many different entrepreneurs at different stages in the business and just wanting to find out what is it that they want in life because everyone wants different things in life. You know, like not everyone wants um, a nice car or a nice house. They just want to contribute or make a difference or make an impact or just connecting with other people. So for me, it's just getting to know who they are, asking questions about, you know, where they are going, but also where are they now? Like what holding them back? And then from there, find out what is their main ruin of themselves and then give them one piece of advice. I try not to give so many or like talk about so many things because yeah. 
people are not going to take action when there's so many things to do. That's so you right. just have to start with one thing. I love that. Love that. Love that. You got to chunk it down, right? Yes. I, 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 the, that go, the old saying, um, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at <laughs> one a time. At a time. <laughs> right? Yes. Like, I know that expression. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, so if let's say that somebody called you and they said, Dr. Janice, I, I'm, I'm, my electricity is being shut off tomorrow. My, my uh, car was repossessed last week. I can't feed my kids. I don't know what to do. What do you say to that person that's stuck there and and everything's hitting the fan and they don't know what to do to get past that. And you and I know it starts right up here, right? But but what what do you say to that person to get them past that that mindset that you know and get them into action? Well, it start with what is it that they doing right now? Like what is their why? Like what is their purpose, right? Yeah. Everyone should be able to have a reason or a vision of what they want for themselves and a lot of time when you not you fell you know it's part of life it's okay to fail you're just going to get back up but you know you have to look back and see what is your purpose what is your why like for me like I'm working hard because I have my son I want to be a good role model for him so my why is making sure that he be a good citizen when he get older, you know, and able to contribute back to the world. Um, so that's why I work so hard because I want him to know what it takes. Um, so yeah, I would say, you know, what's your why? Like, you know, what you want out of this life, you know, like you have so precious, like, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want people to remember of you when you're no longer here? Um, and just get them to have more clarity of what they want out of life. Wow. That's, that, that is an awesome answer. That's, I Thank think, you. <laughs> I think that's, that's what the most people's challenge is. It, Steve Harvey talked about it in, in during the growth conference, right? He was awesome, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's your gift. <laughs> uh, exactly. And, and, you know, I, I did a live stream last night talking about, like, I, it woke me up. Like, it literally, I'm 50 years old, and I'm like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm just now getting started. Like, right now. I feel like, okay, now things are getting real. Because after, after hearing Steve, it messed me <laughs> up, right? It just messed me up. Like, yeah. okay, am I... Am I really living my gift? And, and, you know, the answer is no. I don't think any of us are living to our full potential. Not, not many. Yeah. Grant might be. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's getting there, yeah. He's getting there. He's <laughs> a work sure. in progress, too. But, you know, that, that's the thing is, is I've, seen, I've been there personally where, you know, I had my car mm -hmm. repoed or I had the electric shut off or, or I didn't have money to feed my kids, and I'm and 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 I look back at that now, and I think, man, I just wasn't taking action. I just wasn't taking yeah. action. If you take action, everything works out for you, right? Exactly. And then a lot of people get confused about actions. Like a lot of time they do things, but it's not really productive too. Right. So you get used to being busy. But yeah. that busyness doesn't produce much, too. Right. So, so, so have to understand what is taking action. <laughs> right. Surfing, surfing Facebook all day is probably, unless Facebook's paying you for that, that's probably not the action you need to be taking. <laughs> right. Yes. So, um, so let me, let me ask you, like, is there anything that you would say, um, to everybody and, and, and again, this is kind of a shorter interview, um, but you know, is there any, what would you say to everybody on here that might be, because this show is all about helping people break through that, that are stuck. Right. What would you say to everyone on here? Um, 
to to get them unstuck, to get them moving towards success? What would you say? Like, what are your last words? I guess of of like this is what I would say to really motivate and inspire people to take take some action towards their dreams. Um, I would say to dream bigger I mean when I came here I didn't have a dream because I didn't know what I wanted Um, but over the years I learned that you're not going to be able to go where you want to go if you do not have a bigger dream for yourself and your family and the people that you want to be part of so I would say make sure that if you're going to have big that it's able to encompass everyone and their dream as well um so it start with your mindset and from there once you have that mindset and your dream then you can do anything you can do anything that you want to but you have to start want because no one else is gonna know what you want i love that and again, I, I totally think mm-hmm. that everybody on this planet has um, a, a purpose for sure. Um, I think that we kind of get to decide what that purpose is maybe, or I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, I think that, that you're, you're 100% right. You've got you've to have a purpose and then you have to take action towards that purpose. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so, so Dr. Janice, how can everybody on here follow you? And if they need, a, if if anybody is in the San Diego area and you need a dentist, this is your girl right here, right there. Yes. <laughs> so how how can um, everyone follow you? I'm on Facebook and Instagram um, under Janice Storm, just my name and my uh, my full first and last name and I also have a book called keys to a healthy smile after 40 so they can just go to that website to get more information as well is that on is that on Amazon Uh uh-huh it is I didn't know you had that how did I not know that (laughs) we didn't talk about it yet so that's why (laughs) oh my gosh well let's talk about that here I thought we were wrapping up talk about your book (laughs) So, so, yes. so you have, you have a book. I do. I, I written it with my sister. Um, so it's called Keys to a Healthy Smile After 40 uh. and it's for my patients and, um, it just won a Pinnacle Book Achievement Award as well, um, what? under the health, yes, category. So we really, really proud of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's awesome. So what? What in the world made you decide to write a book? Uh-oh. Uh, Are you there? Uh, con, um, conference. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're frozen. You're Hello? Fro- you're frozen right now. Uh-oh. Um, oh, there. You're uh, back. I'm you're back. Frozen. You're back. You, there we go. I think you're back. Okay, yeah, perfect. you're back. There we go. Um, yes, yeah, so it was at the first girl conference, um, listening to Grand Talk, and um, we got inspired. I was there with my sister, and we were like, we need to write our story. So we started the process of writing our book, and it's finally, it was published in May of last year, in 2018. Congratulations, that is really awesome. Thank you. It's taking action, right? <laughs> it, it, it is. I, hey, I can totally relate. That's Grant, yeah, Grant, Grant inspired book. me to write a book too. So, yeah. so wow. So you, um, you, you, you have a book. Wow. Why didn't I know yeah. that? I should have known that. <laughs> we should have done a pre-interview. <laughs> oh my well, gosh. this is more. It's better this way. Yeah. Yeah, me, 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 making me look like a moron for not digging deeper. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, no. so, so you have, um, so it's a bestseller. Um, I'm not sure if it's a bestseller, but it's up there. <laughs> that's that's so incredible. Hold that thing up again. Hold hold your book up yes. again. Keys to a healthy smile after forty. Up a little bit higher. Seven secrets to. 
feeling seven years younger. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, guess what yep. book I'm going to get after this show? <laughs> this one, Yeah. Right? That is so awesome. Congratulations on that. Okay, so everybody so go much. out and get her book immediately. Go to go to Amazon? Yes. And probably just type in your name and you can find it, right? Yeah. Correct. And it's D O A N. Yep. That's awesome. That is awesome. So everybody make sure you follow Dr. Janice and you go to Amazon. I'll post the link to your book on this post here here after the show in a little bit. So, um, Dr. Janice, thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's so much fun getting to know Yachty and my story. Thank you so much. Yeah, oh, it's and, and we'll do a follow-up here, maybe another follow-up interview down the road and, and, and see, uh, See how much more of a bestseller you are. And let me ask you this, though. I do want to ask this real quick before we get off here. The writing the book because I I have like a I have a, a an academy where we we go in and teach people how to write a book. Right, like so many people don't even realize that it's not difficult. Um. So, but you know, when you think about what did writing a book do for you personally and your 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 you know mental well-being and what did it do for your business did it did it have any positive impact in your life absolutely it's like i'm proud of being able to have a book you know not everyone have a book so me and my sister able to write a book and publish it that's like giving birth. <laughs> right, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So, you know, it definitely helped us to feel confident and feel good about ourselves because we able to produce something. We were able to create this book that yeah. we made together. Um, it does help our patient as well. Um, and basically, sorry, um, I'm on my phone. And so basically, people are like, texting me and calling me so give yeah. me one second for me to make sure that it got sent to voicemail there we go okay yeah you were you, you freeze every time that happens so yes so it, it helped you a lot it helped me a lot personally and it helped me professionally because I'm able to put myself as an expert or thought leader and have you know credibility and other people, um, it just in general. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. And I, 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 I get it because people don't understand that writing a book, first off, most people don't write their book and they should. Um, but second, like it, it builds, builds your self esteem. It builds your, it builds momentum for you in life. It builds mm -hmm. your, your momentum and, and helps your business pick up steam. It's an incredible thing everybody should do, for sure. So, yeah. Janice, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Somebody on here did just say that you have a very beautiful smile. I agree. Um, I've, I, I've actually thank met you. dentists with, with bad teeth. And I'm like, how, how, how can you be a dentist with bad teeth? That's Wait. not even like... That's like, yeah. And of course they can't pay their bills and can't figure out why. Like maybe fix your teeth, doc. <laughs> <laughs> like, so anyway, well, thank you so much. Don't hang up on Skype. I'm going to end the live stream. Thank you to everybody who's been on here and watched this and shared this. Share this out. Dr. Janice, yes. you have an amazing story. Your energy is incredible. I love it. Thank you. Everybody have a wonderful day and thank you for coming on.